Alright everybody, welcome to yet another Ionic tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be pretty much finishing off with our application by just fixing a bunch of things like making this in center, just enlarging this up a little bit and just pretty much changing colors and doing all sort of good stuff so that it looks nice on a mobile device. So let's get started. Well, if I just take a look here and... Uh, this color right here I can change this to a hex value and uh, this one is I guess the color actually so the next one is this one so I can just change the BG color as well then what I want is actually this one which is actually centering this thing looks like sort of dynamic styles and get style if I just take a look what this get style is uh, get style so this is a function and uh, let me just copy this function as a whole inside my app.js I just paste this function right here and just detab it a little bit you can see pretty much it's just returning a bunch of styles to the element and uh, because we are not making use of the semicircle mode so we can safely omit that and actually we can just omit this one as well again we are not making use of semicircle then it just throws it the top code to 50% the bottom to auto transform is transform then these are browser prefixes then font size is something so we need to care, take care about that okay so scope dot radius since we have hard coded this what I want is actually just get the radius here and uh, because we are making use of a variable you can I guess just emit this or with this or let's just make use of this to keep the thing simple now since our application is responsive therefore we actually doesn't know uh, where is it right here so it's right now some sort of broken so we actually doesn't know what the radius is so if I do something like scope dot radius then 100 then the font size might work well for a specific font but it would eventually just break down for other device views I guess we are missing some sort of styles there so if I just take a look what we are missing so I guess these ones yeah so let's just open our CSS folder progress here we go so it appears here but a bit misaligned okay now we need to get our radius some sort of so again we need inspect element so this element is SVG with a class of run progress so document dot query selector or let's just keep it to get elements by class name because this is a bit fast and on mobile devices you would probably like to get this one only so this is how we get our width and uh, I can just assign this to my scope dot radius and uh, the radius would be obviously divided by 2 because width is the diameter kind of so if I reload and why the heck is circle not appearing? All right. Let me see. We have got responsive. If I just remove this. number if we have got the timer doesn't really work actually so 
So what was the last working state of this function? So if I just close this app for JS and just comment this out, this return statement. Let's just see if this works now. Not really. And uh, for this one yes it does work so there's some sort of problem here yeah so there's some sort of problem here and uh, let's find out that so again I can just decommend this out and for radius if I just alert this scope dot radius okay so we get zero so that might be the problem and uh, the reason we get zero is that the document kind of doesn't has loaded actually so one thing we can do is bar svg is this thing right there and then svg dot onload is a function because you can make use of the onload on svgs just like you would make use of on window svg dot get box and that stuff so if I alert scope dot radius now okay uh, I guess we should probably get rid of this because that is creating problem and the reason is that that radius attribute is actually just used before our application is loaded so that radius actually turns to zero and the reason we can omit that is because we are making use of responsive here so our code really doesn't require radius actually so we are just requiring this radius for font size again if I just reload this okay the alignment doesn't look very appealing does it so it's top 50% bottom left 50% top 50% left 50% then transform translate by minus 50% and and uh, top 50% doesn't look like it's 50% does it because it looks way more down than it should probably okay so I guess that did the trick so we need to just set a relative position to progress wrapper as well progress wrapper position is relative and here we go so if I just resize this text again you can see we pretty much then got a very nice font size there so uh, if I just take a look at this font size it's 25 point something again if I reload it's still 25 point something and uh, why is this so if I get the this thing right here it's still 180 and uh, actually it's 540 so um if i just make use of instead of get b box i make use of get bounding client rectangle okay so i don't know maybe get b box is returning only the svg coordinates accordingly in which the svg was coded so we can make use of uh wait a minute this thing 
and pretty much we need to make use of instead of this get b box I found what it was get bounding client rectangle okay sweet now if I reload reload you can see the text doesn't look very small actually so now it looks kind of better and uh, finally we have almost done our application this is the SVG one so instead of this timer I can just simply get rid of this and for this button what we can do is actually I can just wizard this side the official docs actually and I can just say this is a button positive class of positive and uh, for the assertive one we can just say this is a class of assertive and just change it to start and stop because it's obvious uh, we get something like this but if you want it in a single line you can do that as well so we can say this is div id buttons and div and right here we can pretty much actually let's just get rid of this alert in buttons button actually I was just kind of writing in SAS style button is uh, uh, float left button first child you can say first child then buttons last child is float right then you would probably like to clear that as well display block all right so we can see pretty much that it has worked and uh, we just need to get rid of that br and change its width to buttons width to 100% and uh, I guess we could just probably this one is float right actually isn't it yeah so now that makes sense float right padding 30 pixels 0 and actually 0 30 pixels and actually not even 30 pixels let's just keep it to 10 percent so on the width again 30 percent and something so here's our application if I scale this down a little bit you can see it still looks good and uh, one last thing you can do is just give it a margin big circle of 20 pixels and reload so here's our application you can see it looks pretty cool and awesome and the only thing pretty much is left is that we have just hard coded this number right here so we can just get rid of that so in the next tutorial we'll be looking at how to just soft code this so that the user can actually set their own timer so that's all for this video tutorial and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching